Welcome back to Bullets and Brass, folks. We have good news on the ammo front. I, yeah, did not expect this. I honestly expected to be telling you that prices that continue to go up, usual doom and gloom and buy now and oh my God and so on. I still think you should be buying, but we got a bit of a reprieve. Prices up a little, down a little, nothing significant. I'm not gonna run through the whole pricing. In fact, most of what we're gonna talk about today is powder because that's still an ongoing issue and I don't think that's gonna change. So if you're here because you wanted to see the reloading information, welcome. If you're here for the ammo pricing, guess what? That was pretty much it. <laughs> uh, ammo pricing did not move enough to bother talking about. That's the whole video for that. More importantly, powder is still available. Powder is still available at what for lately is good prices. Uh, they're a little high compared to what we're used to seeing, but like if you price powder in the last couple of years, it's, it's not bad. It's going to go up, it's, availability is going to go down. This is not fear mongering. The companies have literally told us they are eating into the reserves of materials to make the powder that cannot last indefinitely. Uh, the, the supply chain for this is hurting uh, unless we suddenly are friends again with Russia and if we stop pissing off China, then it's not gonna change. And I don't see either of those happening. Uh, th these are global strategic moves and they are not really motivated to sell us more of that material because we're using it to do things they don't like. And I mean, that's just, we made a choice. I don't disagree with that choice, but it has consequences. If you are not familiar with what I'm talking about, go do a little digging about nitrocellulose. Basically the core component of modern smokeless powders has a limited supply. And uh, about a third of our supply normally in the US for the powder manufacturing came from overseas. And we are not getting that third. So yeah. Uh, and we're also using more of it because making artillery goes through a ton of it. And we're making artillery because we're sending it to Ukraine which is why Russia doesn't want to send us nitrocellulose. Yeah, logical, right? I mean, I, I, you can't even argue with that concept. Like, I, I don't understand uh, why anybody would think that would not happen. If you're new to reloading, uh, which seems to be pretty common with my viewers, I'm getting a lot of views on some pretty core fundamental reloading videos. You may want to focus on basics. Don't, don't try a million different powders go, hey, these are the three calibers I need to load for. And if those three calibers are like nine millimeter, 45 and 357 Magnum, go get a whole bunch of CFE pistol or whatever the equivalent is from your preferred brand and call it a day. Don't buy two pounds of this one, two pounds of that one, a pound of that one, because then when you run out of the one you're specialized in for a particular caliber, you've got nothing. If you, buy something like CFA pistol, assuming we're doing the pistols right now, you can buy a bunch of it and it covers all of them. Uh, now it is not universal. There are plenty of pistol rounds it doesn't work for, but you can actually use it from nine millimeter up through 44 Magnum, 45, I was gonna say 45 Colt, but 44 Magnum, 45 Colt. Is it ideal in those bigger ones? No, but it works. Are you gonna get a perfect load? Mm, if you're looking for maximum velocity, no but you can go to the range with it, right? So if you have one pound of powder for your hunting loads in that, or your, oh my God, wow, you know, that was super awesome kind of loads, great. But your average day-to-day -day plinking loads can be CFE pistols. So you could stock up and have however many is a lot to you in pounds of powder and be good on a wide variety of calibers that you're loading. And so if you add a caliber in that area, you're not like, oh shit, I gotta go find a powder and now it's not available. Stock up on the basics. Uh, this is just as true on things like small rifle stuff. I'm gonna, again, CFE 223 is good for a wide variety of smaller rifle rounds. Uh, <laughs> CFE Black, if you want to do a lot of mid-range supersonic 300 blackout along with several other calibers. Uh, if you do 6.8, uh, that works well. 6.8 SPC, not, not the bigger ones. Um, for smaller rifle stuff, you know, 5.56, uh, even 308, 
Uh, you can actually get away with things like BLC2, Varget, H335. CFE223 does work on 308, by the way. You're just, you're stretching the range. You know, maybe you can't get that peak load with the heavier bullet or, or whatever, but it's usable, it's functional, it's a quality shot. And I think that's important. I think that as supply goes down, having more of something rather than a bigger variety, when what you have more of covers your bases, is more useful. You know, if you're doing other calibers, there's other powders. I, I have a whole list of notes here about which powder is for what thing, and I don't think it matters. You get the point, right? Uh, if you're looking for more information, go look up loads online. Uh, I'm not giving you reloading advice in terms of like the actual load. I'm not doing it on YouTube, sorry guys. That is asking for trouble both with YouTube and you. Uh, reloading is something you need to figure out and decide your risk level for yourself. Again, I'm picking on, on Hodgkin here, but pick your, pick your brand. Uh, it, it's not, I just, I'm familiar with that lineup. I use a lot of theirs and IMR, which they own. So that's what I'm familiar with. You could just as easily do this with Accurate, Winchester, Vitaveri, uh, whoever, okay? So what I'm saying is pick powders that you can get more of they can do more things and stock up. Because then when you can't get more supplies, you have this, this more flexibility to it. And if, hey, I can't get the, that one, right? And keep in mind, those are gonna be very popular powders, very common powders. They're going to, those are going to be the powders they're going to keep producing because they do cover more bases, right? If they have to produce one powder, not three powders, well, they're gonna pick one that covers all three, right? I'm guessing, don't hold me to that, I'm guessing. If you go to the store and they're like, well, we got these three options total. Yeah, you buy the one that does the closest to what you need and you call it a day. Now keep in mind, you gotta make sure it'll do the job you need, but if you were stocked up ahead of time with something that covered a lot of bases, maybe you don't have to go to that store, right? Maybe you don't have to pay $100 a pound for powder. Just saying. Primers still well available. Prices seem to have stabilized nicely. Do a little digging, figure out what works for you, and be ready. Because I mean, if you're watching the the Second Amendment news kind of thing on YouTube, on Instagram, on Twitter, uh, they don't put it in the major national news very much. We are winning some court cases. We are losing some court cases. A uh, whole lot of back and forth but they're not, they're not going down without a fight, right? They're not rolling over on this. It is still gonna be a contentious issue this election, and that's the issue. It's, for the most part, this is not, I'm not saying there's an ammo panic because it's the end of the world, I'm saying there's an ammo panic because we create the ammo panic because people get scared. Uh, that's just how it goes. And election years, that's, that's how it rolls, that's how it happens. Uh, just plan for it so that you're not adding to that panic. Anyway, take care, have fun, stay safe, keep shooting, and watch out for your uh, reloading. Make sure you're following the manual and you're playing it safe, guys.